Hi there, Chris here with another quick tip for y'all. In this video, we're gonna be looking at quickly how I wet blend a surface with retarders. And so, you can see we got the other little action camera going. And so that's just to give you a general idea of how it is that I'm working. This is gonna be pretty much a single take. It's gonna be rough, but this is pretty much how I work. The more polished look of the, of the uh, video is obviously done in editing, but this is because people want to see the whole process in which I blend, um, maybe to gather a, a better understanding of how the process goes about. And I don't need the second brush because <laughs> that was the last video. <laughs> and so we're gonna quickly blend the cloak on Mr. Anshi here. Anshi, Anshi. And she, I don't know. Anyway, so first things first is we're gonna grab some dryad bark. This is gonna be used for the shadows. We could use black as well. You know, I don't know. Do you wanna use black? No, let's use, let's stick with the dryad. And so the, he's been base coated in Zemesi Desert. That's what you can see there. And we will use some white scar for our highlights and so to help with our process we are going to use some acrylic retarder now this is vallejo's brand uh citadel does not create a retarder to my knowledge and so there are other many brands of acrylic retarders uh many artist grades and so i think i've talked a bit on that one so we'll save that one for that video <laughs> And so let's quickly lay out some colors here. So I'll always give our pots a quick shake, grab some paint from the tab. And when I'm doing the wet blending, it's probably a little bit overuse of the paint or too much paint, I should say. And, but, oh well, it's just so that I got lots here. One to one with the color and then quickly mix in the paint with the retarder and make sure it's thoroughly mixed and so this is the part usually where <laughs> you know you guys don't have to sit too long through it but you do when you are using retarder you do want to make sure you get a very thorough mix um, mainly because if you don't thoroughly mix it it can uh, dry unevenly and so you can actually create kind of weird kind of things that happen on your model <clears throat> and so let's grab some desert here grab a little bit more okay let's grab our retardant and roughly lay out the same amount so it's roughly a one-to-one -one. i know we're just kind of squirting it onto the palette and and it's not you know terribly accurate but that kind of comes with experience, how much paint to draw off and mixtures and such. Like I've been painting with the paint pots for a while and you know, anybody who's gained any bit of experience with the paint pots pretty much can eyeball uh, how much paint you need on your palette and such, especially for those of you who are getting into your mixings and such. And why wouldn't you be, right? Next is some white scar. Just get a little bit of this on the palette. There we go. Grab my retardant. I always give it a bit of a shake just because it's it's a very thick gel. And so now I find with the retardant with GW paints, it um, it doesn't it doesn't mix quite as nicely as it does when it does with Vallejo. And so, yeah. I don't know, it's just the way the way it looks, like the way the paint looks, especially when I'm drawing it on on the palette and everything like that, it can kind of, it just, it just doesn't look the same. It gets kind of, um, just funny. I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's like little, the pigment itself in the paint is glopping up and becoming like little beads and so it gets kind of annoying 
And so, now, see? Real time, right? And so, we are going to quickly lay down some base color. And for this, I pretty much always just use one brush. You could use two brushes when doing this. It really doesn't matter because the paint is not gonna dry very quickly, so you don't really have to rush through the process. And so very quickly, I am just going to quickly lay some color down onto his cloak. And it's really just rough. This is just to help our colors uh, mesh with the, with the base color. And this is pretty much how I always do it. There are other methods for it. And all are equally valid. And, you know, watching me, you may figure out another way to do it. Maybe you'll figure out another more efficient way. There's always room for improvement in this hobby. And if you want to be an innovator of painting, please feel free. You'll, you'll never have a guy like me telling you that that is wrong. I mean, mind you, sticking your paintbrush in your ear is wrong. But other than that, and so... <laughs> sorry, I'm just trying to... <laughs> fill, fill the time there. <laughs> okay, so very quickly, now whenever I'm uh, blending, and, you know, I'm, I always like to start at the mid-tone color. Work my shades down and then work my highlights up. It's just the way I like to work. You could start with the base color and work your way up. You could start, you know, at the highlight, work your way down. That's really just personal preference. This is my personal preference. Doesn't have to be this way. Feel free to do whatever it is that makes you smile. <laughs> okay. So let's get some color down here. And when blending, for most parts, this is my favorite way of blending. Two brush blending, I've, I've only ever really used um, for little small areas that had to be blended. And, but even then, if I've, got, if I've got mixtures out and I'm mixing when using retarder, I'll just use the retarder and you know paint those little small areas. And so, like I said, it's, it's really not that often that I do a lot of two brush. And I do prefer this method because it allows you to have the most control over the transition. So let's just start by picking out some shadow right there. Okay. Now, you can see as I work the color into the fold, I'm running the brush with the... Um, the way the, the, the line at which the fold runs. And so you can see how it's, it runs this way. So my brush strokes are going this way. I could run the brush strokes, you know, side to side like this, but that's not terribly efficient as you can pretty much achieve what you want almost in a single stroke sometimes, like so. And then you just quickly go yeah, you're gonna get some sound effects now. And you can see as we work our color in, like so. Okay. And then really quick, let's just fill in some more sh uh, shadows here. Let's fill this little shadow in. We could use a smaller brush here, but I like, the, I like these base coating brushes for this job. Uh, mainly because of the length of the bristles. Um, it gives you nice control of the flow of how your brush strokes run. And I just prefer it. Often when I'm painting canvases, it's just, often these are the kinds of brushes I tend to use the most. It just gives me the most f control of the flow of the strokes. And so, yeah. Okay. So I don't want this to run too, too long. So we're gonna come back in with some desert. I'm just gonna call it desert from now on. I'm not gonna call it by its first part of its name because it's just gonna end up stressing me out. And of course, I'm using the Citadel colors. I mean, you don't have to use the Citadel colors. You can use whatever colors you have on hand or prefer. I just happen to use these because 
for the most part, they're readily available around here, especially when we head to store. So you can see, and when I'm when I'm putting my brush into the uh, paint, you can see like I didn't even clean it off really, because like the amount of paint from the dark brown and then transferring it over, it's very minuscule and it's really not going to change too much uh, the value of the color, and so. I usually just don't end up too worrying about it too much. So I'm just gonna drag some more color in here and some more here. And it all ends up mixing anyway. And even if you inadvertently create a tone that you didn't really want, but then all of a sudden you lay it down and you go, hey, that kind of works. And so that's essentially that. And so we we'll just, and you can see the quick, like laying out the shades is really quite quick. And in fact, you can kind of see how it's really, it's almost like I'm overbrushing the area. You know, like when you got too much paint when you're dry brushing, well, that's like overbrushing, right? And it's almost like that, especially to catch some of these top edges of the folds. And you can see, I'm just quickly creating those shadows in there. And again, this is a quick tip, so. <laughs> I'm not gonna play with the color too long. <laughs> you guys are gonna trap me into this or I'm gonna end up playing with these colors too long. Now another thing is, when I have the two colors and I'm happy with how much paint is down, see how the brush is like non-existent with paint? I've wiped off most of the excess water. And that's really important as well, is when, you're, when you are doing this, that you are drying the brushes off really well. They don't have to be, you know, bone dry but i'm talking you know a lot of the moisture has been removed and so what i like to do with the color is grab some of the base color or the host color and draw it through and then create a little bit more highlight that way and really it's just it's just to kind of separate the two colors but also start keep the blend happening and so there we go yeah here we go. And so like I said, I'm not going to get caught up doing two, oops, I messed that up. See, and you can always, you can always correct your mistakes. <laughs> you see how I kind of pulled that too much brown into that area there, but, and so let's work with some white. And again, you see, rinse my brush off. You see the hairs are all over the place, right? But this is, this is a, an older base coating brush, but the, the new base coating brush is pretty much the same. And so let's grab some white and let's start laying in some highlight and so essentially I'm only going to work on the one side of the model just because I don't want to take up too much time and so let's bring in the highlight this way and often when I'm working either in the highlight or the shadow I almost just always quickly just lay it out and just kind of shellac it on almost if that's even a word some here and again when where I'm laying out the highlights obviously that's a, a big part of the painting right is knowing where to place and so this the light is coming downwards and so I'm kind of doing almost a, a, a zenith style highlighting here kind of not really I'm not huge into zenith but it's really not really my bag and so there let's, let's leave that as is okay and again, this is really rough. Like I'm just, you know, laying out the color here. I'm just giving you a quick kind of idea of the whole process in which I blend. And so, again, you see, I have no paint on the brush right now. And all I'm doing is just following the highlights, relying on the blending, the, the mixture of the paint on the surface to create our color gradients. And that's essentially it. Oops, too much paint in there. See, that's the beauty part of when it's wet. So you can just go in and just correct it right away. Like so. And that's essentially it. That's wet blending with the retardant. That's a quick little insight into how the process in which I work when I'm painting these models and you're not seeing all the steps and things I do and the quirks, I guess, 
I do when I'm painting my models, but yeah. And so I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> and so hopefully you found that quick tip video informative and useful. For the next quick tip video, leave a comment below, or if somebody beats you to it, give that comment a thumbs up. And we'll see you in the next video. Happy Wargaming.